And it's Henry Downey who leads Derry, Mick McCarthy leading Cork. One of the great occasions in Irish sport. So many people unable to get tickets, so disappointed not to be here to watch Mark O'Connor and Al Cahalan against the might of Derry. Roddy Gribben on this historic occasion is uh, wished well by his friends. Down in Cork, Con O'Keefe of Black Rock hospitalised, missing his first final for a long, long time. And I've got a note as well that uh, there's a father, Thomas Donaghy, of the Silesian Fathers in Samara in Russia. Wished well by people in Dungiven today. I'm sure Red Square in Moscow will be uh, appropriately decked out. Lots of Derry and Cork fans, I'm sure, even in Red Square. And Paddy Cromwell of uh, Screen as well, also hospitalised. And wished well by all of the Meath people, hoping he enjoys the match. There's Joe Brawley just getting back into alignment once again, one of the great characters. And uh, Gormley there, the number 15. There's a big banner up on Hill 16, it's uh, just uh, dormant at the moment, but it reads, we are looking at it a little bit earlier, it reads John 3-7, and uh, 4-11. One of the other nice ones which uh, caught my attention earlier on, there's a banner with a man who is walking alongside a piper, and instead of old Danny boy, it's become old Sammy boy. Now Brawley will stop Cork's reign. Well, he had a terrific semi-final, but now he's got to do it all over again and produce it against either Niall Cahalan or Brian Corcoran. The lads from Docks Bar in Belahi sending their good wishes also. There's uh, no breaking away by either team on this occasion. You remember what happened in the semi-final between uh, Derry and Dublin. And they were telling me in Derry afterwards it really, really was just a domino effect. One fella broke and they all broke. So this splendid backdrop of colour. And it will be indeed Damien McCusker to go away to the goal on our right. And Derry will play right to left in the first half, supported by the wind. Dermot Heaney, the right half forward this afternoon. And uh, Dermot Heaney has got the boss, best possible record, I think, playing at Croke Park. This is his seventh time to play here. So far, it's six wins out of six games played. That's in league and championship. Billy Morgan, who's done so much with his uh, Cork team of mentors to bring this side to the final. Billy's been in charge now since 1987. He's got the best record over the last 100 years of any Cork coach. He's a worried and concerned expression on his face. You can't really blame him. It's such a big occasion. And I've noted that Derry indeed have made a switch in defence. Fergal McCusker has moved out wing back. And Gary Coleman, as expected, is in there on Colin Corkery. So oh, Brian Corcoran lining up on uh, Joe Brawley. And Eamon Coleman has been in charge for the last couple of years. They've been close, they've been knocking on the wall of success for the last few years. A smiling selector there in the background. That is uh, Dennis McKeever. Dennis who's got a nephew, Hugh O'Neill, watching this over in uh, Philadelphia, sending his greetings. So the final piece of the ceremonial, Aaron Nevian, the Artane Boys Band and Finbar Wright.
deafening noise from the two sets of supporters. But now it's all down to the 15 players. There will be widespread sympathy, I know, throughout the country for a Derry victory. But uh, down on Lee's side, they'll think of nothing other than a seventh Sam Maguire trophy. The wind is particularly strong. Supporting Derry for the opening 35 minutes, it has to be worth three, four points if it's well used. And that gentleman there looks uh, a little uncomfortable, but the tickets have been so hard to come by. They've been saying down in Cork that the only tickets available in the last week have been bus tickets. Tommy Hard is ready. So we wish the teams well. The 104th All-Ireland final is underway. Shea Fahey touching it down to Teddy McCarthy. We'll be anxious to see just whether their fitness will sustain a full 70 minutes as Kieran O'Sullivan is fouled in possession. Anthony Tohill, big tall player. Stephen O'Brien slipping as he kicks that ball in towards Corkery, he rolls up magnificently for it, there against Gary Coleman, remember, that's the marking alignment. Needing support, getting it from Joe Kavanagh. Ground looking a little slippery early on, the movement here on the ball produces Mick McCarthy in the attack. Chased over there the whole time by Dermatini. Cork settling better. Tony Davis with the first attempt for a score and he's put it over the bar. Tony Davis playing in his 25th championship match. Getting up to give Cork the lead. They look more like the Confederate team rather than the Rebel side. Very good move from Cork and finished by a great point by Tony Davis. One of the problems for Derry would be that Dermatini who comes back to defence, bringing Tony Davis back with him, and Tony Davis showed there that he can score points, so it was noticeable that Colin Corfrey won the first ball and went in high. Oh. Kieran O'Sullivan laid that one sailing over his head. It's Brian McGilligan here, fouled by Don Davis. Then uh, throwing the ball away, the referee had a quick word with him for that. Younger brother of Tony Davis, the point scorer just a few seconds ago, McGilligan taking it right into the arms of Niall Cahalan. Cahalan. Driving it forward towards Don Davis. Well caught back there. Superb fielding there by Fergal P. McCusker, known as Rooster. Again, the other number four has it. Now Shea Fahey. Cork against the wind, leading by a point. Teddy McCarthy just settling himself down. And a Cork player going on the ground. That was uh, Shea Fahey seemed to run into a stray elbow. Another free kick being awarded. Anxious moments for Derry. They try to settle down. This is John O'Driscoll. The attempt to dispossess him failing there by Tony Scullion. But the ball touched on the ground. All the pressure coming from Cork. Just like it came from Dublin against Donegal at the same goal at the same time last year. You know what happened then. Dermot Heaney inside towards Seamus Downey. Mark O'Connor was first to the ball. Breaks out towards Shea Fahey. Getting the support of Teddy McCarthy. Now Mark O'Connor. And there was a bit of pushing. The player on the ground was Don Davis, the foul committed by Fergal McCusker. Come on, Terry! It was very much 6 of 1 and uh, whatever. There seemed to be a spare bit of jostling from the two players involved. Corkery running into his own man. Trying to release the ball outside. Joe Kavanagh trying to get the measure there of Henry Downey. This could be a very interesting confrontation. Downey did well. Well dispossessed by the Derry captain, Tony Scullion now. Scott lifting the siege. Ball won back there by Stephen O'Brien. Referee noting the foul, allowing the advantage to Cork. And this time it's Mick McCarthy is on the ground, McKeever committing the foul. Derry that little bit anxious, inclined to foul in their attempt to get possession. It's been noticeable that most of the duels have been won by Cork so far. Every player loves to get the first touch in an All-Ireland final. Most of them have gone in Cork's way. Stephen O'Brien beating Damien Barth for possession. Colin Corkery beating Gary Coleman for possession. Shea Fahey beating Anthony Tohill. And I'm a little surprised that uh, Derry are using Gary Coleman and Colin Corkery because uh, Corkery would be much stronger than Gary Coleman and it showed in the first couple of balls that came in. Stephen O'Brien is clearly unhappy with that hand injury as Colin Corkery goes across to take the free kick. 
the angle a little bit too acute, even though it's fisted down by John O'Driscoll. It's going to be a kick out to Derry. Colin Corkery with a magnificent contribution of 3.26 from five matches so far. Damien McCusker yet to be beaten in this year's championship, hasn't conceded a goal. Shea Fahey and Teddy McCarthy beaten by McGilligan, who fisted that one on. Kieran O'Sullivan towards Teddy McCarthy. Poor marking by Derry. Don Davis getting well away from Fergal McCusker. Been allowed the opportunity to set up the attacks. The initiative has been seized early on by Cork, and it's Joe Cavan into the breach. There's a goal on here for Cork, and he gets it! A goal by Joe Cavan after five minutes. Derry was standing back. Cork came forward with great purpose. That's a good goal by Cavan. Well, Cork have been doing all the pressing. And uh, Don Davis probably overcarried the ball and gave it to Joe Cavanagh. Kieran McKeever hesitated, he should have gone to him when he didn't come, he slipped and Cavanagh sticks it away very nicely in the corner of the net. Joe Cavanagh's third goal of the championship, beating the cover. And Cork emphatically ahead. The Derry attack broken up, and it's Kieran O'Sullivan soloing downfield once again. Derry are taking a long, long time to settle in this match. Barry Coffey was going into the breach there. Taken down. In fact, it's Joe Kavanagh. Right on the 20-metre line. There's a problem away at the canal end. The fans would seem to have broken a gate over there and they're trying to stream in the stewards across there trying to contain the situation just as Colin Corkery taps it over the bar so Cork ahead by five points and still the fans come in on the far side the weight of supporters coming in there this could be a very dangerous situation with fans all pressing against one another and the stewards having to take the wise course of action of allowing people in rather than risking a serious incident. Brian McGilligan coming forward. Barry Coffey trying to hold up his progress. Dermatini. Damien Barton now looking for a Derry score to settle down his team. It's Johnny McGurk. He can do it against Dublin now. He's done it against Cork. The player from Lavi. Raising Derry spirits. Derry really needed somebody to take responsibility there. Damien Barton could have gone for a score. And John McGurk, just as he did in the semi-final against Dublin, not afraid to shoot. Most of the Derry players involved with that movement seem, seemed a little bit hesitant. Now, it would appear, though, the referee might have stopped this game with the amount of fans coming in at the canal end. The fans are still coming in, but uh, in fairness, the stewards have been doing a good job and trying to keep the supporters off the pitch on the perimeter. Ender Gormley now, yet to get really into the action. Ball spills loose there to Fergal McCusker, pressing forward. Remember, in spite of the number four, he's playing left, half-back. Now Brolly. Trying to get motoring. Anthony Tohill, there's two dairymen outside there. Damien Barton. Henry Downey, the team captain, letting that one drop up into the air, but away to the right-hand side. No trouble, really, for John Kearns. Well, the gate has been closed once again, and some order has been restored. It was a potentially serious situation, but it never got out of hand. Ball played on to Barry Coffey. Gaps opening up in front of him. Johnny McGurk going back to try and restrain Barry Coffey. Supported now by Don Davis. Outside is Mick McCarthy. McCarthy looking for support. Fouled, and the referee says no penalty. Instead, it's going to be a 45. McCarthy went down looking for something straight away. Look of frustration on the face of the core captain. 45 the outcome. 
big difference, of course, is that Cork are attacking at speed and running at their men with the ball. And they seem to be able to create a lot of extra space. Derry seem to have a lot of problems opening up the, the Cork defence. Mick McCarthy there probably thought he was in for a penalty. Referee was quite correct. That ball should have been picked up and cleared rather than put out for a 50. No question in your mind that it was a penalty? None whatsoever. Tony Scullion lets that ball drop down. Kieran McKeever outside to Gary Coleman. Scullion down towards Joe Brawley. They expect a big return from Brawley. Brian Corcoran is his marker. Hasn't played a great deal of football this year. Heaney. Ball cut out there by Mark O'Connor. Settling down well. Pushed. Gets the free. Again, a bit of frustration there for Ender Gormley. But there's a long, long way to go. Only ten minutes gone in this... 1993 All-Ireland Football Final. A fair amount of bunching just in front of John Kearns. Barry Coffey is his target. Ball picked up there by Anthony Tohill. Down towards Joe Brawley. Brawley's on his way, trying to get inside Brian Corcoran. Getting the support there from Damien Cassidy. Ball blocked down. Attack still alive. Ender Gormley in the greasy surface. Having difficulty taking it up. Niall Cahalan is back there. Tigerishly making his way out. Linking up with Teddy McCarthy. Who drops it to Brian McGilligan. And that's gone over the bar. A mistake by Teddy McCarthy. And Brian McGilligan was in like a flash to put it over the bar and cut the deficit to just three points. Mike Cahalan, who has done very well for Cork, but it's noticeable Teddy McCarthy lets the ball out of his hands. One of the players not wearing gloves today, and Brian McGilligan kicks a great point. So Derry settling down quite nicely now. But a lot of the players seem to be using gloves. I think the ball will be wet. Uh, Teddy McCarthy has sent for gloves since he let that one slip. Yes, we had a shower of rain during the minor match. More persistent drizzle than anything else. It's made the uh, surface quite slippery. That's a great ball kicked inside there, but the goalkeeper has enough time to adjust his positioning. Once again, it's Niall Cahalan. This time not considering... Well, he has indeed given it to Teddy. Oh, that ball given away by Teddy to Anthony Tohill. Tohill on his way inside. Stopped momentarily by Stephen O'Brien, pulled down. That's going to be a free in. Well, two mistakes. They may be untypical, but they've given Derry the opportunity to claw even nearer. Terrible mistake by Teddy McCarthy. And when Tohull is coming on the run like that, he's very difficult to stop. Stephen O'Brien did very well initially to stop him, but then pulled his leg and should leave it an easy score for Ender Gormley. And Derry clawing their way back nicely into this game. So Gormley, who is the leading scorer. Taking his time. An important kick, this. Now there are just two points between the teams. About 12 and a half minutes gone in the first half. John Kearns normally very accurate with his kickouts, trying to place colleagues. This time it's Shea Fahey, but Tohill has read the intentions. It was held by Shea Fahey. Derry get the free kick, taken quickly. Cahalan here fumbling. That's beautifully taken up by Dermot Heaney. Heaney for Derry with a goal chance. Outside it goes. Cassidy blocked down by John Kearns. Magnificent save. A 45 for Derry. The Cork defence looking wide open. Derry settling much better, and the Cork custodian really coming to his side's rescue. And a beautiful chip up with his hands on the run by Dermot Heaney. He thought he should have shot himself. Damien Cassidy forced wide. That's a brilliant save by John Kearns. John Kearns today playing in his 30th championship game. Kept clean sheets against Kerry and Mayo. And prevented Derry going in front there. So Anthony Tohill coming out to hit this one. He's had a last, great last 12 months really. Becoming more assertive as a midfielder. Also a very useful place kicker as he illustrates there. Derry's recovery is still on course. Wind assisted and now there's just one between them.
Cork are trying to leave a big space so John Cairns can kick the ball out to Barry Coffey. Well, Barry Coffey has been marked tightly, and McGilligan has it inside towards Ender Gorman. He breaks the ball down there. Damien Cassidy going back to recover possession, trying to go by now Cahalan, avoiding the block, hit in invitingly. Mark O'Connor was sure it's a goal! And the referee says it's a valid goal. Seamus Downey, the goal scorer, was outside the square, made his run in. But if you see it again in replay, you'll note that the fullback Mark O'Connor wasn't absolutely certain about whether to attack the ball or not. Damien Cassidy does very well and puts it across, but there's complete hesitation. John Cairns in position, nobody seems to shout, and Seamus Downey does very well for full power, gets in and gets his fist to it, and that's a brilliant goal to give Derry a great boost. So Derry have gone in front, this is the attack again, a bit of hesitation, Downey wasn't hesitating, and he gets a fine goal. John Cairns should have been doing the calling there, he was in the best position. So after Cork led by five points, a goal and two, that's a terrific recovery by Derry. Colin Cork, we're trying to go by the cover there. Three men against him, finally it's one back by Gary Coleman, the son of the coach, Shaman Coleman. Now further McCusker for Derry. Bad ball, gives it away to Stephen O'Brien, picked up by Tony Davis, the man who got the first point of the match. Dermot Heaney trying to restrict his progress. It's Joe Kavanagh. Doing the little solo, going for the score. Well, there can't have been too much in it, but it's been flagged wide. Cork's second wide, Derry with just one wide so far. Damien McCusker, the, Cusker, the Derry goalkeeper, in the past he's played at midfield and uh, full forward for Derry. So he's been around. Teddy McCarthy there in some trouble, not getting the measure of Anthony Toho. Derry had the free kick. Cork struggling noticeably at midfield. Derry trying to give a good supply of the ball into their forwards. Most of the attack so far happening on the left-hand side of the Derry attack. Here's Don Davis. Nal Kahalan into the breach, the shoulder of the Brian McGilligan, and the referee says it's not a fair side to side, it was an elbow in fact, and Tommy Hard wasn't too far away. Two players who played against one another in the compromise room series, McGilligan there and uh, Teddy McCarthy. Henry Downey, Dermot Heaney. Joe Brawley is the target, and the referee says that's a foul by Brian Corcoran. Jersey tugging. Volley the taker. In towards the goal scorer. Seamus Downey. Brother of the team captain. Now Johnny McGurk. Toho. Steadying himself. Beating the attempted block by Teddy McCarthy. And he's put the ball high and he's put it over. That's a wonderful point. A second point by Anthony Toho. Well, the point was made before this match that Derry have the most formidable midfield. And they're proving it, having taken about seven minutes to settle down. Yes, a great point from Cahill there on the run, but Joe Bradley was the man that made it. He's winning possession of Brian Parker and most of the time. Brian McGilligan isn't too pleased with the linesman. Perhaps Casserly from Westmeath. Barry Coffey has the line ball taken into Shefahi. Going for the score himself. At the outside of the boot, he screws it over the bar. You remember those points he scored against Meath in 1990. Now there are two between them. Kickout's been taken quickly. Fergal McCusker laying it forward towards Henry Downey. Trading passes. McCusker having to be sharp to keep that one in play. Tony Davis. Good move forward here by Joe Kavanagh. Teddy McCarthy. Trying to link up with John O'Driscoll, who's got nothing so far from uh, Tony Scullion. Towhill. He's been so impressive at midfield, along with McGilligan. Now Damian Barton, look how deep he is, back in his own half-back line. Two Cork been able to go across for that one, however, that's uh, Kieran O'Sullivan. Cork will be hoping to keep it nice and tight up to midfield and up to half-time if they can manage it. 
as Gary Coleman, that's standing on ceremony, boots the ball over the sideline. A second picture by Colin Corkery, and once again it's Shea Fahey. Will he go for another score? He does, but this time it's away to the left, and it's Cork's third wide. Well, Anthony Tohill is after being caught very badly twice there, and, and Brian McGilligan, they should have covered off Shea Fahey. Uh, Brian McGilligan and Shea Fahey, and he got caught arguing with the linesman here before when that ball went over the bar. It certainly was a dairy line ball, but uh, McGilligan got caught and he should have covered off Fahey, and Fahey then had time to kick a point. A little push there, it seemed, from Shea Fahey on Brian McGilligan, but he gets away with it. Here he is again. Now Don Davis. Once again, there's a space in front of him as Gary Coleman and uh, Fergal McCusker try to prevent the way, and Mick McCarthy has a shot brilliantly blocked by Damian McCusker. But John Kearns can do it one end, McCusker can do it the other, illustrating why he's rated one of the top three goalkeepers in the country. Stephen O'Brien forward for Barry Coffey, crossing the 45-metre line, trying to take it by John McGurk. Henry Downey trying to restrain him, it's still Barry Coffey. Ball kicked inside. Joe Kavanagh trying to play it outside to John O'Driscoll. But it's Fergal McCusker instead for Derry. Fouled, and that's going to be a free out for Derry. After all the spade work done on the left-hand side by Barry Coffey. The Derry backs would need to get much tighter in this game if they're winning it. Henry Downey is having a lot of problems marking Joe Kavanagh. And uh, the half-back line would want to get in a bit faster in, in, fr in front of their men, in front of the goals. They seem to be caught all the time being second in. Mick McCarthy ran into a tackle there from Brian McGilligan. And the leg held in the end by John McGurk. Cork will get the free kick. That's the 45-metre line that uh, John is on. So Mick McCarthy moving in to take his place at top of the left. Colin Corkery, the other corner forward, has moved out to take this free, which uh, effectively is a 45. Into the wind. It's a big kick, and he's put it over the bar. A second point by Colin Corkery. So the gap has closed to just a point once again. And this is the save a few minutes ago, Don Davis going through, Cullum. Yes, Don Davis getting in in front of Fergus McCusker. A good back would always be goal side of his man. Mick McCarthy had a, a good chance there, very, very well saved by Damien McCusker. Danny Cullity has been prepared on the far side. Anthony Toho, shoulder by Don Davis, shipping the shoulder well. Now Cassidy. Not such a good ball, but it comes good eventually because Ender Gormley got there ahead of Tony Davis, and now it's Dermot Heaney moving in with purpose. Heaney going for the shot, great block down by Stephen O'Brien, comes out to Kieran O'Sullivan. Cork breathe a sigh of relief, thanks once again to a superb block by the centre-half back, Stephen O'Brien. That's a great fetch by Gary Coleman. Coleman advancing the ball out towards the full forward, Seamus Downey. Again, nice ball forward. Joe Brawley pressing the attack forward. But somehow at the back, it's Mark O'Connor there with possession. Now it's Brian Corcoran, Teddy McCarthy. Outside towards Joe Kavanagh, trying to stand his ground against Brian McGilligan. McGilligan for Derry. Such a strong man. Good ball inside. Kearns is out for it. They all missed it, however. A close cut thing there. Dermot Heaney not too far away from getting a vital final touch. Great ball across by McGilligan. If somebody had been coming in from the far side, it would have been a great one. But Dermot Heaney just a little bit short. And John Cairns does enough to put him off. Dermot Heaney being marked by Tony Davis, who's got a very good record in All-Ireland Finals, having played in three, and his man has yet to score in any of those three games. Here he is, the man this afternoon, Dermot Heaney, fouled by Tony Davis, cursing his luck. One of, the, one of the problems for Derry is that when they attack, almost everybody attacks, and that means half-backs are up there, and that leaves uh, space very short in, in the Cork back line there, and leaves it easy enough for the Cork backs to cover off. So Ender Gormley, wind assisted, 24 minutes gone in the first half, Derry 1-5, Cork 1-4. Largely entertaining All-Ireland final. That's gone over the bar. A fine.
one point by Ender Gormley, kicking a second point of the day. Two between them. But in the wind this afternoon, OK, it's blowing behind you, but you've got to learn to trust that breeze as well. And Gormley has done so. And Billy Morgan will be hoping now that Cork can go in at half-time, maybe just two, three points behind at worst. Kick out picked up by Tohill, then lost to Shea Fahey. Henry Downey, powerless to prevent Fahey going forward, committing the foul indeed. And Barry Coffey coming up to hit it quickly. In towards Colin Corkery, which seemed to have moved in towards full forward just momentarily there. Fergal McCusker now. Ball in over the head of Mark O'Connor. Seamus Downey racing for possession. He's got players to aim at. One of them is Joe Brawley. Brawley going by Brian Corcoran. That's been a successful ploy so far. Joe Brawley kicking it over the bar. The first of the day for Brawley. Man of the match in the semi-final. With a stirring performance. And he opens up a, wide, a gap of three points. Not exactly a wide gap by any manner of means. But significant nonetheless. Seamus Downey is doing very, very well at full forward for Derry. He's getting every ball that's kicked into that area. And Joe Brawley does very well, even though under pressure from Brian Cork, and it was hard to see him getting a score from there. He was able to swing it over with his left foot. Cork experiencing problems in their full back line just at the moment, but it's in the attack that they're moving, and Shea Fahey was fouled after he hit that ball away. It's going to be a free from the 13-metre line. Shea injured and there was great concern about his availability for this match a couple of weeks back because of the shoulder injury he picked up in the game against Mayo but he was back taking a full part in training over the last two weeks playing this afternoon Shea in his 34th championship match having started back with uh, Kildare against Wicklow in 1981 Dr Con Murphy there he tells me that this is the 13th time he's been Medical officer with the Cork team on an All-Ireland football far or hurling final day. Henry Downey conceded the free. 13 metres out, it should be a relatively simple one for Joe Kavanagh to tap over. The view on the dairy bench, Dermot McNichol there in the foreground. One of the real live options for Derry in attack. They're doing well in attack. For Kavanagh to put two points between the teams and he does so to go with the goal that he scored after five minutes silly thing for Henry Downey to do it there because giving away a late free in those sort of positions is almost the same as handing a point to the opposition and Joe trying to G up the forwards around him to show a little bit more mobility. Shea Fahey there with uh, Brian McGilligan. McGilligan breaking the ball down. A lot of the ball being broken down. Derry particularly alert at half back and half forward, reading the intentions, getting a lot of possession. Now Mark O'Connor. Good ball chipped into the centre. Don Davis getting onto it. It was a high challenge from Gary Coleman, but it reaches Colin Crockery. Corkery, Heaney is against him there, and that's kicked over the bar. Colin Corkery with another score, a third point for Colin Corkery. There was a collision off uh, camera between John McGurk and Tony Davis, quite accidental. The referee said it was all part of the game, and this is the score that came from Colin Corkery's kick. And Gary Coleman decided to go for that ball and didn't make it, and Corkery shows how mobile he is as ever, well as everything else, taking the ball across and of course can score with both feet as well, a great point for Cork. So Derry now with six and a half minutes to go to half time, they'll have the breeze against them for the second 35 minutes, they'll be hoping to notch on another score or two, Damien Cassidy. Damien Barton was his target, being well marshalled by Stephen O'Brien. Appeals from both sides, referee says it's a Derry ball. Derry are moving all of these balls much slower than Cork. Cork are trying to isolate Corkery inside, which is a good idea. Derry should be moving all these sideline kicks and uh, free kicks much more quickly. 
So Tohill is going to be the one to hit it. Probably going for the score. Dropped in well in there. And to Gormley on a tight angle, played way back. Dermot Heaney in there contesting. Ball played outside eventually to Damian Cassidy. And the referee's whistle has sounded. It's going to be a free to Cork. Yeah, Damien Cassidy, good chance there, but picked the ball straight off the ground. Back in the Derry defence, Fergal McCusker and Gary Coleman have switched roles once again, and it's Fergal McCusker who is now marking Colin Corkery. Ball with John McGurk. Anthony Tohill. The shoulder there by Barry Coffey, upsetting his stride momentarily. Damien Barton now. Punted left-footed inside towards Seamus Downey, who has scrambled for possession. Downey, the Derry player, going in, touching on the ground. It's going to be a free out to Cork. And the decision not exactly meeting with the approval of the Derry fans up there on Hill 16. Brian Corcoran is the Cork player on this occasion in need of attention. Hurler of the year last year. This is just his third championship game in football, having played five games in, uh, in hurling. If you think of all the teams that he plays for, as he's still in under-21, they come to probably 12 or more between club and county and so on. John O'Driscoll still waiting up there at full forward to get some uh, change out of Tony Scullion. Cairns with the free. Again, Barry Coffey was the target. This time, Barry Coffey, a judge to have fouled John McGurk, who takes the free kick himself. A Derry player on the ground. The jeering from the Derry fans. Referee, having uh, not seen the incident, allows play to continue. Damien Barton. This is Joe Brawley, looking for a score for Derry. It's gone to the right. Joe cursing his luck. And the referee going down now to have a word with his linesman about the Derry player who was felled just as that attack was in full flight. Ender Gormley has been marked by Niall Cahalan this afternoon. So is Niall the guilty one? Worth taking a look at again, it seems, right-hand side of the camera. Here's Niall Cahalan, and there's right. a box into the face. If the umpire sees that now and tells the referee He'll have no option but to put Cahalan off. It's a, a clear punch in the face. Well, now Cahalan pleading his case, but it looked bad. And if the umpire, as you say, saw that, the rule is quite specific. Tommy Howard is content with the lecture, and now Cahalan is a very lucky man. Ender Gormley feeling quite aggrieved, he has every reason to be. Take another look at this, Gollum. Well, it's fairly clear cut, uh, Gormley and, and Cahalan were tussling there before the camera, but uh, Cahalan punches him quite clearly in the face. It was retaliation by Niall Cahalan. Gormley was jostling just before that, and to Tommy Howard, well, perhaps his umpires didn't see what happened quite clearly, in which case there shouldn't have been any booking in the first place. Here's Nal Cahalan, he's got a lead off, and now he's been injured. And this time he pleads his case, and the game just turning a little bit nasty and angry. Nal Cahalan is still on the ground. It's uh, Fergal McCusker launching the attack for Derry, who lead by 1-7 to 1-6. Gormley, the player who was injured with that box earlier on, drives it in high and he puts it over the bar. A third point for Ender Gormley, a first from play. And he makes his point there to Niall Cahalan as he comes out. Might be worth keeping an eye on those two for the rest of the match. Well, it's the only way to answer any sort of aggression is to put a score on the board. And Ender Gormley has been having a lot of trouble. He wasn't able to get the ball off Niall Cahalan early on in the game. And never ceased to be amazed at his ability to kick points from the left-hand side like that. Very difficult for a left-footed kicker, and it's a brilliant point. Just a minute to go to half-time now. Two between them. Derry's Dermatini, the taker of the free, down towards Mark O'Connor, broke away from him. And the 
Derry player with Cahalan and Tony Davis effectively fouling the attacker. And really, Tommy Howard is going to have to take a firm grip on this match. The notebook is out again. Well, Dermot Heaney goes down here bravely on it. Uh, Tony Davis comes in, attempts to give his shoulder. That's not a bad tackle compared to some of the ones that's gone on. And uh, I think the referee is booking him more because of the fuss created by the Derry players than anything else. It looked an ill-timed tackle, but uh, not malicious by any manner of means. No, certainly I don't think that that was... Oh, he's been sent off! Oh, that's got to be one of the major talking points of this final. Tony Davis really is one of the most sporting players on this Cork team. Worth looking at again here. Now, Dermatini and Davis going in there. Well, the elbow was in use. It was ill-timed, it was a bit clumsy, but I don't think it was a sending-off offence. No, I think the referee has gone over the top there, uh, completely putting Tony Davis off for that, because some of the challenges that went before are much, much worse. Well, if it's a case of sending the next player off or commits an offence, Tony can regard himself as being very, very unlucky. We're not condoning dirty play, but that was not dirty play. One or two things that went on earlier were. Tohill dropped in towards Ender Gormley, beats the forwards, however, for pace. The game is now ticked into injury time. So Derry with the full compliment against the 14 men from Cork now. And this, of course, the second time in an All-Ireland football final in recent years that Cork have been reduced to 14 men. Happened also in 1990. Two between them. Stephen O'Brien coming up to kick this one. Towards Colin Corkery, fisted away by Fergal McCusker. It was a jersey pull, the jersey of Johnny McGurk there by Don Davis. Ender Gormley winning that challenge there with Niall Cahalan. Gormley getting free, getting support as well. The kick here is high, comes off the post there from Gary Coleman, back into play, and it ends up going over the bar. Ender Gormley the point scorer, that's four points for Ender Gormley from this match. Derry are finishing the half very convincingly. Three points to the good, with the wind at their backs, will that be sufficient? And a great, cha uh, great chance of a point, a great move by Derry, comes back off the top of the post and the players coming in have the advantage here, Ender Gormley doing very well since he got that punch from Niall Cahalan, he's improved considerably. It's half-time, Ender Gormley scored four points in that first half, Cork took a commanding lead in the opening seven minutes with a Joe Cavan a goal after five, Seamus Downey's goal after 15, Gormley one of the Derry heroes from the first half, but the controversial sending off of Tony Davis after 35 minutes, one of the big talking points. And so, at half-time, it's Derry who lead by three points. Derry 1-9, Cork 1-6. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Referee trying to make sure that everybody is inside the 45-metre line. They're not by any manner of means, but he's not going to hold up the game any longer. Cork get the free. Shea Fahey the taker. Remember, there are three points between the teams. Mick McCarthy trying to go forward, trying to get something for Cork here. Shot partially blocked down. And it's gone out for the first 45 of the second half. That ball seemed to go out wide, it didn't seem to touch anybody, and again, a surprising decision, a few decisions made by linesmen and umpires since the start, and that one, I think, should have been wide, but the referee is given the 50, or the 45. Colm, it's uh, been the case in many finals in recent years, as we watch this once again, we'll just see whether or not, in fact, there was a block, I don't think there was. No, that should have been wide. The question I was going to ask you is how 15 cope with 14, it's been a problem in the past. 
Yeah, but there's a big difference if you're 14 men and in front, and you can afford to lie back. But if you're 14 men and behind, that's a different ball game altogether. That's Colin Corkery hitting the first wide of the second half. The fourth in all. Derry had four wides themselves during the first 35 minutes. What it amounts to now for Cork is that they must come and attack, which will leave plenty of room for Derry to use their extra man going forward. If Derry were, uh, if Cork were in front, Derry would have to come at them, and uh, it would mean that Cork could drop back and leave maybe Colin Corkery up front. Colin Corkery is up front with Mick McCarthy, just two in the full forward line as Danny Cullity tries to set something up for Corkery. John O'Driscoll who really was quite anonymous in the first half, number 14 in your picture there, he's now left half forward, Tony Scullion has come out from full-back to mark him. And what Derry should do is put Scullion and Corkery inside and bring Fergan McCusker out on, on John O'Driscoll. That's exactly what they've done. Just as we talk, and the ball has gone in and gone over the bar from Colin Corkery. So a fourth point for Colin Corkery. And the margin, a mere two points. Again, the tension very evident across there on the Derry bench. Evan Coleman and uh, Harry Gribben there, two of the selectors, along with Dennis McKeever and Mickey Moran. Moran has done so much to prepare this team physically for the contest. It really is anybody's All-Ireland. John O'Driscoll, Glass getting a bit of latitude and trying to get into the match. Blocked down partially there by Fergal McCusker. It's Damien Barton. McCusker once again. In towards Ender Gormley. Cahalan stood back for him, but he was well supported by Kieran O'Sullivan. Gary Coleman saw Brian McGilligan coming back, considered, I think, the chip up into McGilligan's hands, and said, swept it forward towards Joe Brawley. Against Brian Corcoran, who's been in real trouble against Brawley. Support from John McGurk. Mark O'Connor under the dropping ball. With flowing match, the referee just holds up the game as uh, Mark O'Connor was held. A big week ahead for Mark O'Connor after this final. He uh, graduates from UCG and he picks up an arts honours degree on Wednesday and he's got an intermediate final back down in Cork next Sunday. Kearns free kick. Ball won there by Shea Fahey. Three dairy men around him, Kieran O'Sullivan. One of six players playing for Cork in the first All Ireland final. Of course, it's a completely new experience for the dairy men as well. Mick McCarthy in there at the end of that, but some strong defence which Tony Scullion's involved in. The referee, I think, is going to throw the ball in. Well, players are supposed to be back 13 metres. Danny Cullity against Anthony Tohill, two of the tall lads. Tohill winning it. Out to Tony Scullion. Scott lifting the siege. He's fouled. Derry get the free kick. A lot of movement in the Derry backs. That's Kieran McKeever. Small corner back up towards the corner forward. Gormley playing it nicely ahead. McKeever going in there. Mark O'Connor coming out to defend. Commits the foul. Derry get the free kick. Free kick from just inside the far sideline. McKeever very much in the thick of the action there, setting up the uh, ball. The danger for Derry is that they use too many short passes now because they really need to get the ball up to Joe Brawley, who's have, causing a lot of problems here in Brian Corcoran. But if they keep short passing to the extra man, it will give Cork a chance to funnel back into defence. Tohill's kicking it. Danny Cullity going out there. He was on the line, something Teddy McCarthy used to, but Teddy is off for the second half. A poor clearance. Pressure back on the court backs once again. Henry Downey, the Derry Keep team captain. Ender Gormley, Cahalan still in chase. A shoulder coming in there from Kieran O'Sullivan. And this time it's a court ball. The difference illustrated there is they take it quickly. There's a lot of space down there. And the bump in the back there by Colin Corkery on uh, Tony Scullion. 
Well, they're all fired up in this match. It's that kind of final. John McGurk. Fergal McCusker just moving to his left and he kicked it off McCusker's back. But he has possession again. Now McCusker. Change of direction but uh, John O'Driscoll, a judge to have pushed. The rain coming down once more. Making it very unpleasant. Jersey of Damien Barton was uh, tugged. Now, Dermot McNichol, a buzz of anticipation as he attacks the cork goal. Henry Downey, shoulder there by Barry Coffey. Downey's a top operator. This is Dermot McNichol looking for another point for Derry. And the umpire signal, but there's three points between them. McNichol's first point of the second half. Well, I suppose you'd call that an inspired substitution. Dermot McNichol, who wouldn't be noted for been a very good scorer of points kicks a great point here from an acute angle very need to attack much more quickly though than they did on that occasion what about the shoulder a little earlier between Henry Downey and Barry Coffey and Downey did well yes Barry Coffey will be uh, much bigger and stronger than uh, Henry Downey so for Henry Downey to put him down just shows the power that Henry Downey has So the free kick having to be taken again. It was taken just a little bit too quickly. And it's difficult now for the cameraman to try and keep the rain from the lens. But that's the setting, Croke Park. Seven and a half minutes into the second half on All-Ireland football final day. And a disappointing kick from Colin Corkery. He doesn't miss too many of them, but that's Cork's fifth wide, the second of the second half. And pleasant times up on Hill 16, but uh, they won't worry too much, I suppose, about the rain if their team can stay ahead. Eamon Coleman just went behind Damien McCusker's goal to give him a little bit of advice about the placing of the kickout. Number John McGurk is the lone operator, the free man in the Derry team. Shea Fahey, ball down towards Joe Kavanagh. Kavanagh going through, looking for another score. And this time the referee signaled that it's going to be a free in. The cork forwards clawing him to award a penalty. Henry Downey quizzing the decision, but the referee, I think, deciding that the push happened outside the large rectangle. So a free to cork. Colin Corker will be the taker. A 15 metre free or thereabouts, straight in front of the post, and an opportunity to put just two between the teams. And it's all to play for. Five points for Colin Corkery, three of them from Freeze. This is the attack once again, Colin. Well, Joe Kavanagh bursting through there, takes far too many steps, and the referee really should have given a free out. He wasn't held until he had taken more than the minimum number of steps, or the maximum number of steps, but the referee will always favour a team that are down to 14 men. Well, he took about eight steps in all that time. The contest at midfield, won by Cork, Don Davis. Gary Coleman just to moving away from him. Little chip inside, John O'Driscoll coming in, he scored! John O'Driscoll puts Cork back in front. His first time to get into the attack in a meaningful way. His first score of the match, his first goal. Well, a great ball across from Don Davis, picks out John O'Driscoll coming through, nobody marking him and he sticks it away, it's about the first time he's got a chance at the whole game. That's a brilliant goal for Cork. Well, he'd been having a great season. Lovely, clever ball inside, the defence indicted, however, they were moving out en masse. That's a splendid strike. Free kick to Derry. There's always that danger of Cork getting a goal because Colin Corkery is completely isolated in, in front of the Derry goals and if Cork can get the ball forward quickly, they're going to cause a lot of trouble. So we'll see how that goal will upset or unsettle 
the two teams, especially Derry, will be hoping for an instant response now. Brian McGilligan. Derry, for most of the match, had looked the better team, but now they're being led, but it's early stages in the second half. This is the goal from the camera inside, and a splendid angle indeed, the goalkeeper had no chance. Ender Gormley, his side trailing by a point. Will he have to try and put this one over from the sideline kick? And he's going for it, drops short, Stephen O'Brien lets it uh, run from his hands. It'll be a 45. It has all the makings of a terrific second half, just as it was the most enjoyable first 35 minutes. Gormley with the 45. Eamon Coleman across at the far side is having a word with John McGurk, I think, about how to utilise the extra man. Gormley kicking it low, picked up here by Brian Corker, and that will certainly boost his confidence. And John Kern saying, let's... Uh, Take it nice and easy now. Shea Fahey lets it run on towards Joe Kavanagh, fisting it into the clear. He must have spotted a cork man. The only man there, however, is Anthony Tohill. Turning well. Kicking it into space. Mark O'Connor coming thundering out. Sideline ball to Derry. Here's Kieran McKeever. McCusker. Taking it back from McKeever once again. Now Coleman. Now Johnny McGurk. Will Eamon Colvin insist that he push forward into the Cork attack more and more? Barry Coffey, gleefully taking it away. An attempt at dispossessing him working out. McCur McCusker oh, looking up with uh, Dermot McNichol. Here's Tovin. Oh, oh, a shoulder in there, and the referee indicting Anthony Tovin as Sir Joe Kavanagh stood his ground. A foul by Anthony Tovin. Kieran O'Sullivan belting it forward towards Colin Corkery. A two-man full forward line, Mick McCarthy being the other predator down there. Derry get the ball back, it's Tony Scullion. The referee has whistled up, it's going to be a Derry free kick. So now the goalkeeper can have it. This is Henry Downey again, it's a measured build-up by Derry playing into the wind. They're trying to control the pace of the attack, if at all possible. This is Joe Brawley. Good ball for Brawley. Takes up such good angles, an injection of pace into the attack. Here's Brawley, fisting, and he's put it against the post, and it's back in there, and it's gone wide. Seamus Downey had the last touch on that one, but unable to get a second goal for Derry. Real disappointment for this player from Lavi. Joe Brawley causing all sorts of problems for Brian Carvin coming in here. But tries to do the right thing, put, punch it over the bar. It comes back off the post. Seamus Downey really should have put that one in the net. A big let off for Cork. It was a real chance for Derry. Watch once again from the camera inside as Joe Brawley attempted the fist down off the post. Mark O'Connor adjusting his positioning and mighty glad. But uh, disappointment for Seamus Downey. Cork with the free kick, 15 minutes into the second half, a huge one, but the goalkeeper is out. Playing like a sweeper behind his uh, full back line. And just in case you've come in late to join the Ireland football final, Cork have lost Tony Davis, who was sent off in the last minute of the first half. So it's 14 against 15, Derry being led at the moment by a point, and Henry Downey coming forward, trying to set up a score. Pini, and he's put it, well, put it over, and has he? No, it's a 45, it's a 45, it was very close. 
You thought for a moment there was a goal there, then perhaps a point, but he has to be content with a free kick. Henry Downey should have probably put that one over the bar to level the sides. Uh, he made great... He came up about 60 metres up the field to join in that attack. And uh, there's a lot of car players in on Dermot Heaney to put it out for the 45. There he should just flick those ones over the bar and uh, at least get back level. So little between the teams, just a point. Anthony Tohill has the 45. Eamon Coleman continuing to run all around the park, trying to fire up his team. They can go level here. It's a huge kick. Mark O'Connor under it. He's really settled down well, playing a very good second half. Kieran O'Sullivan stopped by Dermot McNichol. Jersey was being pulled. Referee says that's a free kick. We've yet to see the best of McNichol in this match. Remember, he replaced Damien Cassidy at half time. The same could be true, Ger, for Anthony Tohill in the middle of the field for Derry. He hasn't been in this game at all, and, and they really need himself from Brian McGilligan to get the grips with it there because Danny Cullity has done well since he came on. And Cork are fighting hard, they're funneling back well in defence. Everybody is doing a lot of hard grafting for the team. Huge kick by John Kearns, it reaches Don Davis. Far outside of Mick McCarthy trying to turn inside. Gary Coleman supported here by Colin Corkery. A look at the post. Huge one in, fisted, and outside. Danny Cullity, I think, is the one who had made the run forward there. And Cullity having come through from midfield. Cork are working harder for one another in the second half. I don't know what Billy Morgan had to say to them at half-time, but they're certainly playing with great fire and passion. They're showing a lot of commitment, and they're trying to make up for the missing player. But Derry there with every chance of taking their first All-Ireland. And McGilligan, the player on the ground. Barney was telling me that he thoroughly enjoyed the hurling final here two weeks ago. He's a great hurling player as well. So it's going to be a throw ball between the two number eights. One by Shea Fahey, but he gives it away to Derry's Brian McGilligan. Up towards Enda Gormley. Gormley over there is held by Mal Cahalan. Enda a little unhappy because he knows that uh, Seamus Downey had an advantage. Derry had the free kick. Into the clear again. Such good positioning taken up by Joe Brawley. Trying to turn on the style again in the second half, just as he did against Dublin. Back to Johnny McGurk, the extra player. Brian Corkins out there to provide a buffer. It's with Gormley once again, and that's wide. The big cheer is from the Cork fans up on the canal end. Disappointment for Ender Gormley. In the first half, he kicked uh, four points from four attempts. And that's a reminder of the score, 2-8 to 110, a point separating the teams. And just a little over 15 minutes to go. Don Davis. Stephen O'Brien coming from centre-half back. Derry allowing Cork now to turn it on once again. It's Shea Fahey against three Cork men. Still Shea Fahey, needs a bit of support. Turning inside, John O'Driscoll waiting in for it, but he's taken too many steps and it's going to be a free out for Derry. And all this while, John O'Driscoll was in there waiting for the ball to come his way. Fergal McCusker. Good run out, stumbling over, the referee says play on. Dermot McNichol now. Getting a bit of encouragement from the Derry fans. That's Seamus Downey. Or Dermot Heaney rather. Heaney and Downey looking so alike. It's Heaney outside to Gormley. Gormley looking for the score. And it's the equaliser for Derry. Ender Gormley with the fifth point of the match. So the teams are level. But Derry are going to have to fight hard for anything to get in this game. Great work by Dermot Heaney, winning the ball, laying it off very well. Again, Enda Gormley, off the left foot, off the left side. Very difficult point, but a great point now, and 
Now Derry should be a little less frantic than they have been for the last five minutes. Brian McGilligan over there contesting with Shea Fahey. Fahey knocking it down to his wing back, who was anticipating, but it's back with McGilligan again. Ball picked up there by Johnny McGurk, late forward here. Henry Downey in full charge. On it goes to Damian Barton for Derry. They're looking now for the lead score. It's a free in. The arms in the air there of Seamus Downey saluting a fine run through the centre by Damian Barton. But there was a good injection of pace just a moment or two ago there from Henry Downey. It really is a backs to the wall situation for the Cork men. Henry Downey is now adding a lot by coming forward. Joe Kavanagh will have to pick him up, just the same as Henry Downey was having trouble picking up Joe Kavanagh in the first half. Downey causing a lot of problems now for the Cork defence by moving forward at speed. Well, fitness is certainly going to play a huge part in the last minutes of this final. Ball coming off the post but going over safely. Anthony Toho with a third point. And Derry preparing to make another change. Eamon Burns is about to come into the Derry attack. The player going off is Seamus Downey. So that's a second substitution having been made by Derry. Much was being said about Eamon Burns in the week leading up to this as there's sympathetic applause for Downey, Derry's goal scorer. Burns is a fine prospect. John O'Driscoll was fouled by Henry Downey, trying to steal a yard away that time. Well, if Derry are going to foul, they should foul in the middle of the field because it reduces Cork by another player who must kick the ball. So Derry at this stage now would have two men over. Remember, Derry lead by a point. 13 minutes to go. Barry Coffey. Thumped in well. Derry there in great numbers. And it's Kieran McKeever out to Tohill. Now Heaney. And it's McKeever once again. A great bit of stuff, as they say in Derry. Brawley had stepped out over the line. Cork at the line ball. Taken quickly by Shea Fahey. Somehow held out there by Fergal McCusker. McCusker just trying to keep the ball away from the Cork lads. Colin Corkery, will he go for a score here? It's going left. The big cheer now on Hill 16 from the Derry supporters. Again, Derry there using too many short passes. Kieran McKeever giving a very, very pass, bad pass away and causing problems with them. Well, a short pass from the goalkeeper to Fergal McCusker. He's watched all the way by Kieran O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan from Oran. In towards John O'Driscoll. Breaks down, however, to Henry Downey. Picking up an awful lot of ball in the second half. I'm sure Eamon Coleman has said something to them at half-time, the like of which you've got so far, are you going to let it slip now? Similar words, I no doubt, coming from Billy Morgan of Cork. McNichol. Niall Cahalan with the hand raised, hoping for a cork ball. Again, very silly play by Derry. I can't understand why they won't get the ball forward quickly to, to Brawley, but he is causing so many problems. Kieran O'Sullivan kicking it in deep, breaks away off Mick McCarthy's chest, down to Shea Fahey. Brian McGilligan going back, they're having a, a fair battle. Contesting everything as if their lives depended upon it. This time McGilligan pulling up Shea Fahey. <laughs> A really miserable afternoon now at Croke Park. The threatening rain. More and more part of a damp setting. But a very good game as Joe Kavanagh lines up this kick. And Joe Kavanagh has put it wide. Cork have missed a few chances. Come on, go, get That's a ball. seventh wide for Cork. A fourth for the second half. Derry with six wides at the other end. On, Brian McIniff wondering whether a, an Ulster team will take the title for the third year in a row. That would be unprecedented. 
Likewise, Peter Quinn, the GEA president, will be wondering whether he's handing over the cup to Henry Downey as he's handed it over to uh, Ulster captains during his presidency. Shea he has it. Stubborn resistance by the Dairymen. John McGurk and Brian McGilligan trying to be disciplined. Stephen O'Brien coming in there. A little frustration. Shea Fahey appearing to be just a little bit injured, winded perhaps after that. So Danny Cullity will come in to contest. Fahey has done really well. He answered those who said that he mightn't be 100% fit. Don Davis knocking it forward, but the referee again has spot, so, spotted some pushing. And the judgment goes against Cork. Johnny McGurk towards Joe Brawley. Very much the danger man in attack for Derry. And again, the referee's whistle has sounded just as Joe Brawley was in the clear. That was for a foul there on Eamon Burns uh, by Mark O'Connor. Cork are making a change and John Cleary is coming into the Cork attack. John about to present a little slip of paper to the referee Tommy Hard and Mick McCarthy goes off so the team captain has been replaced by a player who's very much in form in training. But time now ebbing away. Eight minutes to go, Gormley. Come on, come on, Johnny! Come on, Johnny! McGurk. On his left boot, and he's put it over the bar. Johnny McGurk with a second point. Two between them. Is it to be Derry's day? Well, Johnny McGurk does it again. Certainly doesn't shun the responsibility of shooting anyway. Quick thinking by Garmy to give it to him, and a great point again. Ball fisted down from the kick out by McGilligan. It'll be a frantic last six or seven minutes now, you can be sure of that. John O'Driscoll up towards Colin Corkery, fisted down by Tony Scully. What a match he's had. Tohill here, running into a challenge there from the number 11, who is uh, Joe Kavanagh. Henry Downey now, skipping away there from John Cleary. McGurk again. So many McGurk, six in all, have uh, played for Derry with great distinction down the years. Is this to be the biggest day in the county's history? The referee says, play on. McGurk, again steadying himself, and Barry Coffey this time catches him high, and the referee reaching for the notebook. McGurk in need of attention. Barry Coffey had put out the right hand to try and restrain him, accepting the referee's judgment, taking the lecture, Yes, in that case, Johnny McGurk solos and dummies Barry Coffey. Very high, very dangerous tackle, but again, Johnny McGurk is very small, and when Coffey went to tackle high like that, he was always going to get him on the head. It's a very high challenge indeed, but I feel Barry Coffey at his right hand out to try and restrain McGurk, but caught him very badly. Well, the noise right now, in the main, it's coming from the Derry fans, feeling they're just five and a half minutes away from taking Sam back to Ulster. Well, the team will have to be disciplined and hold their heads. They have a free kick for that foul on Johnny McGurk. Ender Gormley pointed two of the two frees he's had to take so far. But Johnny McGurk is the extra man, and, and there's only three players in the Derry half of the field, and Johnny McGurk should get back there and cover off, because Derry, if they don't give away a goal, will win the game. This is important. It's gone over the bar. Gormley with a six point. Three points from freeze for Ender Gormley. He got three from play as well, and he's opened up a three-point gap. It's looking good for the Oakleaf County of Derry. Connor Cunahan has just been brought into the Cork team number 18. They've pushed Stephen O'Brien forward. Colin Corkery, I think, is the one who's gone off, or has he? Yes, he has. So Corkery is off. It's a bit of a gamble. There are only five minutes left. Cork trailed by three, and Barry Coffey has it. Not such a good shot. Partially blocked by Gary Coleman. Comes out to Kieran McKeever once again for Derry. Coleman standing strong. 
into McNichol. So much support play from the Derry players. I think they feel the All-Ireland is within their grasp now. Dermot McNichol saying, let's take it nice and easy. The injured player there, Danny Colletti. Danny limping back into the action. It has been noticeable in an all Derry's game so far that they've finished very, very strongly. They have a phenomenal level of fitness. And that should see them through these last five minutes. Mickey Moore, I know, takes a lot of the credit for that. That's uh, Harry Griven there from Newbridge. Billy Morgan has done well to take him to this final. But can they prevail? It's not looking good right now. Dermot Heaney has it. Back out to McGill again. They'll be looking for another point to try and kill off the Cork challenge. Heaney once again, back to Brawley it goes. Getting some support from Ender Gormley. Now Cahalan has been standing back from Gormley a bit noticeably in the second half. He's already been booked, of course, from the first. That's a good ball inside, which is Gary Coleman, the manager's son. Back towards Eamon Burns. Burns with uh, Cahalan in the challenge. Brawley has it, Cork. Have a man down injured at the moment, that's uh, John O'Driscoll. Ball's gone wide, Tommy Hard will hold up the play for a minute just to get attention for John O'Driscoll. Scorer of that goal after ten minutes of the second half. The most miserable afternoon. O'Driscoll back on his feet. Billy Morgan saying, do your best. Two and a half minutes to go. You feel that only a goal will save Cork at this stage. John Kearns for the 14 men from the south. That's broken down by the Ulster champions. Ball comes out towards Barry Coffey. Heaney now winning it back with McNichol in support. Referee says ball touched on the ground, 3 to uh, Cork. They're anxious to take it quickly. Conor Coon and the number 18 moving away. This is the other number 18, McNichol. Ball won down there by Stephen O'Brien, trying to set up a cork attack. Blocked down well, free into cork. Disappointment for Henry Downey. Referee saw something in there. Looks on his watch. Under two minutes left. Derry, so near the title. Joe Kavanagh standing back from this one. Derry bringing everybody bar Eamon Burns and uh, Joe Brawley back. There's about 10, in, ten Derry men now in front of uh, Joe Cavan as he goes for this one. It's blocked down, comes back to Cavan again. The ball inside towards Stephen O'Brien, one back, it's again. In the end, booted away somehow out of danger by Fergal McCusker. And Derry feel that they have the title, but Cork will not give up. That's John Cleary. Ender Gormley back there, playing a kind of left-half back role. Eamon Coleman over there. And he's been playing the game almost as a 16th man for Derry. We're under a minute left now, plus possible injury time. Cleary to take it. Pumped in towards Joe Cavanagh, runs away from him, runs away from Barry Coffey as well. Anthony Tohill has it. Tohill for the Derry men. Henry Downey just outside him, his team captain. Getting support from Johnny McGurk. McGurk, a judge to be fouled by Danny Colletti. Some critical decisions now going Derry's way. In terms of scoring chances, Derry set up 26, Cork 20, Derry took 15, Cork 10. In scores, it's uh, Derry 114, Cork 28. That is 17 points to 14. We're into the final seconds of the 104th All Ireland football final. Broken down by Ender Gormley to Gary Coleman of Derry. Are Derry now set to follow down in 91 and Dunny Ball in 92? They've got a free in. Joe Brawley fouled by Brian Corcoran. And they'll be in no particular hurry to take this free kick. Brian McGilligan just having a word there with Joe Brawley, the 24-year-old barrister. Ender Gormley with the linesman there. Martin Murphy from Mayo indicating where the free's to come from. Gormley will be the taker. And Tommy Hart says, you delayed too long, and I'm going to throw the ball up. There were Derry players actually moving away from Gormley that time. This time there's a shot by Tohill. 
it's a free to Cork. Shea Fahey will be the taker. Down it goes to Stephen O'Brien. This has to be it for Cork. As McGurk slips, McGilligan goes back. It's Stephen O'Brien against Derry. Still Stephen O'Brien, and the referee says it's going to be a free back. The whistle had sounded, but O'Brien was doing it all on his own, it seemed, against Derry. So Derry must live on their nerves. Likewise, the Cork lads. A great rallying run that time by Stephen O'Brien. It produces a free kick. Cleary is the taker, but uh, Damien Barton wasn't back. 13 metres, so it's now a free on the 13 metre line. So it's all down to this. Cork must get a goal, otherwise it's Derry's title. That's hit in and it's gone out. And they're arguing inside as to whether it's a 45 or not. And Derry say no, Cork say yes. Tommy Hard goes with the Corkmen on this occasion. Fergal McCusker anxious to know how much is left. I make it, we played one minute and 53 seconds of injury time. And I think Tommy Hard has informed Cork that time is almost up. Kieran O'Sullivan will be the taker. There'll be a big invasion by Derrymen if Cork failed to get a goal here. It's a tall order. In it goes. Comes out to end of Gormley. Derry lift the siege and Derry are the champions. Derry win the All Ireland final of 1993. Sam Maguire is going north for a third successive year. Damien Barton and Gary Coleman did the business. The fans can celebrate up on Hill 16. More of them have made their way onto the field. It was a stirring encounter. Derry did well. They held on to win by three points, but Cork reduced to 14 men after the dismissal of Tony Davis right on the call of half time. That may well have been the difference between the teams in the end. Who knows what history will record that Derry are champions for the first time in their history. They win the title by three points. Confirmation of the final score. It's Derry, 114, Cork. Two goals and eight. Joe Brawley, one of the happiest men. He shed tears after Derry beat Dublin. No doubt he is similarly overwhelmed and overjoyed that Derry takes their place now among the counties of Ireland to lift Sam Maguire. And what a second half Henry Downey had. Overall, he was an inspiring captain. And Peter Quinn does it again. He presents Sam Maguire to an Ulster captain. I'm sure he's proud, I'm sure he's pleased of the way Ulster football has really come into its own over the last three years. Henry congratulated by the Taoiseach. Dermot McNichol is still down there. Billy Morgan, the Cork manager, went across to thank the Cork fans. Now it's presentation time. This is an historic day for the GA. It's the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. And we had an outstanding game. An outstanding game to celebrate the occasion. I congratulate both teams on their performance. I welcome everyone here, particularly those who came from Fileside. I welcome our special guest, the Prime Minister of Australia. And I welcome in particular those who are watching on television in other countries and who are celebrating today with us. Derry certainly will be very, very How popular long champions. Will be gallant in defeat and gracious in victory. Today, I compliment them and sympathise with them. 
but victory today goes to the men from the Oak Leaf. I congratulate them. And it gives me great pleasure. It gives me great pleasure to present the trophy to a man who will bring it back to Ulster for the third successive year. Our captain, Quaren Dara. Our Henry Downey. Peter Quinn makes the presentation, and it's Henry Downey who takes Sam back to Derry. Oh, Sammy boy, they'll sing tonight. As I was saying, it's a very popular victory. It really will be. Cork bitterly disappointed, no doubt, but they'll be the first, knowing their sporting nature, to say to Derry, well done. Unbelievably happy Derry mentors, subs, players who came on like Dermot McNichol. Hook drawn coming this last game. How went your Derry? Taz and Don Arum and Corn Sam Maguire. A whole guy done Kidur over some. It's more an honour do to be kept in the furniture. Because it's actually not any doing like. I don't have the words to describe how I feel. There were stages over this past three years where we were very disappointed and it seemed like this day would never come. But at last, and thank God it eventually has, There's a lot of people who deserve recognition and played no small part in the winning of the Sam Maguire for Derry. Her county board, her sponsor Spare Metal, her supporters club, and most of all, her gallant supporters. I would like to pay tribute to all our supporters. Those of you who are lucky to be here today and those who are sitting at home watching. I would like to thank Cork for a tough, hard sporting game. And they may not appreciate it when I say that Derry needed this all Ireland a lot more than Cork did. I would like to congratulate them and give them three cheers. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. I would now like to thank our management. I'd like to thank Denny McKeever, Harry Gribben, Mr. Organizer himself, Mickey Morn, who has a lot of apologies to make after the Dublin match. And most of all, I would like to thank a man who was Mr. Derry Football himself. And the man who put so much into this team and who always believed in this team. And that is, of course, him and Coleman. Yeah. To everybody at home, we'll be home sometime later on this week. At this stage, we don't really care. But we know we'll get some reception. And we'll see you later. Thank you. Well, they're getting some reception right now as Henry holds aloft the baby Sam. And at Croke Park is just a sea of red and white for Derry. One of the biggest crowds I've ever seen out in a park celebrating a famous win on a wonderful day for Derry.